Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the China Manufacturing Decoded show. And today, today's a treat, and I have two guests, actually. The, the topic is about the Chinese legal system. And uh, what we're going to look at is what legal protection as a buyer you can have in the Chinese legal system if you get bad product or fake product. All right. And uh, as I mentioned, I have two guests today, uh, both of them from the Liang Ma Law Firm in, in Shenzhen. Um, and I'm going to have the, 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 the honor, the, um, the, the chance today to ask some questions to Jessica Su, who is a senior trial litigator at Liang Ma, Liang Ma Law in Shenzhen, as I mentioned. Jessica is a legal counsel and a perennial advisor for various government bodies and well-known private enterprises. Uh, w welcome to the show, Jessica. Time we Hi. are happy to interview you here. Yeah, nice to meet you. And um, Clive, <laughs> thanks. And uh, Clive, Clive Greenwood, who's been on the show uh, quite a few times, is also joining us because he works with Jessica. Uh, as a reminder, he's a senior compliance counsel at uh, Liama Law Firm. And uh, big news actually came out when last week uh, you won the APEC award as the um, technical legal consultant, best technical legal consultant of 2024. Is, is, is that correct? That's in the yeah, APEC that's right, Insider yeah. magazine, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, hello, everybody. Um, yes, that was rather surprising, to say the least. I was uh, delighted <laughs> and very honoured um, mm -hmm. to get it. But um, the other thing is that the um, we also got the um, the Ethics Award as well from the same magazine, which was part of the whole team. Ethical, the most ethical law firm uh, in yep. China. No, yep. Look at that. that well, uh, all right. Well, uh, nice job. So um, let, let, let's jump into the, 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 the topic. So as I mentioned, the topic is in the Chinese legal system as a buyer, what kind of recourse can I have? Uh, what are my chances? How does it actually work, right? So um, uh, Jessica, um, yeah. the first question, a general question, what, what, what kind of advice would you give a Western company that mm -hmm. finds itself in a dispute with mm -hmm. a Chinese supplier, you know, a, a, a dispute related to quality. Do you have some 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 general advice to to uh, to give them in that case? Yes, uh, of course. Uh, you know, in China, we have a lot of suppliers to uh, abroad to give them the product, such as top lob, the phone the cell phone and such as th those things. But first mm -hmm. you should know the companies in China, we should go to confirm the qualification of this company. And if we have some the quality issues, the first of all is we should communicate clearly and transparently to understand the root of causes. Yes. so. We should recognize the local context and the cultural differences and to seek the cooperate with the suppliers. You know, that's the, mm. I think is the important things. And if we should improve their the process and the standards, maybe we can offer support and the guidance to help the supplier to improve the, the process and the standards, the required standards, you know. So, and, and then we should explain is establish the detailed quality agreements and the rigorous quality assurance measure. You know, you know to make sure the standards mm -hmm. are different between the China and the other countries, right? So we should we should know Often. what is the yeah what's the standard, and what's the quality if you if you 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 quiet, right? So if you want to another factor is to consider the capacity building integrative to help the supplier improve their compatibilities. You know, my, my accent is okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. 
Oh yeah, yeah, so, no, hundred percent. Uh, fully yeah. agree. I'm like nodding. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so far, what you've said is good due diligence. Clarify the quality standard and basically mm -hmm. tell them very clearly in specific ways what yeah. you need. Um, if you have some issues, communicate. Make sure they actually fully understand the issues, yes. and and try to to actually help them to improve their. The process to reach your yeah. standard, right? Yes, you know, yes. Yeah. Also, we should maintain the patience and the cultural sensitivity throughout the whole process. Yeah, okay. right. So you mean not, okay. uh, not, um, not coming out in a very mm -hmm. aggressive manner, maybe where mm -hmm. the supplier might just okay, I close myself, I stop communicating, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we should open our mind and keep the patient mm -hmm. because the different culture have some different thought and the language and it's also different. So we should some give give us the patient. Okay. Yeah. Up to what so, point? Makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, it does, but Jessica, up to what point? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I think I really like what Jessica said because this is all about preventing mm -hmm. the, case, the, the the situation where you really have to go to court, right? So this is really yeah. the fundamentals that you need to 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 take care of to yes. make sure that things, um, you know, that the supplier actually can meet your requirements, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. then I think Clive's point is that sometimes some suppliers don't, maybe are not interested in cooperating or mm -hmm. really push it too far, right? So that's yeah. um, that's something else. Yes. Yeah. So if if the the buyer want to purchase some the the uh, the product, you should know what is the certification. Is this really sure to abroad to the other country? Such as the ISO 9001 the certification is most important to the Europe, to America, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. So yeah. we should, so yeah, again, we back should to, do something. Uh, back to due diligence then, right? Making sure you work with the right people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Prevention is, always, uh, pre prevention is always better than the cure, but what happens when... But you know, in China, you, you, in China, you in China, you have some the issue about we should sue to the legal action. Maybe we we have two ways to solve the problem. So the one way is to sue. The another way is negotiate. But if you want to sue to the the court, you have to prepare a lot of documents to prove to the court the evidence how to important and the evidence how to enough to improve your damage. But you know in yeah. not not mm -hmm. not in China, in every world, in, in every country, we also need the evidence. But it's complete yes, it's, it's really complicated. But you know, if the court don't know the fa fact, they should know what has happened, or what is damage. What is the fake certification? How to improve it? So the evidence is most important thing in every beer and country. Mm -hmm. So no. if if, if we have if we have the issue, we have the issue in China. Oh. We should use the Chinese legal system, the Chinese law. How to use the Chinese rules? That's why the lawyer is most important in the uh, to the foreigner buyer. You know, right? So mm. if you if you don't know the, the rules, you, you don't know the, the the root of causes, you don't know how to resolve, how to how to uh to solve the issues. Yes. Yep, yep. So uh, that makes sense. Yeah, that brings me to my second question actually. Um, mm -hmm. So you mentioned if you really want to go to court, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you just mentioned you need to prepare a lot of um, paperwork and uh, you know prepare the evidence in the mm -hmm. exactly the right way, uh, all in yeah. Chinese, of course, and so on and so forth, right? Um, so one 
question people often have is they say, well, I sent a PO for maybe $50,000 US, let's say. Mm -hmm. And yes. then I got poor quality products. Like they blatantly did not comply with my requirements. Mm -hmm. Okay. But still, for only $50,000, um, it doesn't make any sense for me to sue them anyway. Does, does that make sense? Whereas if it were maybe $5 million, it would make a lot mm -hmm. of sense, right? Mm -hmm. How If someone asks you, maybe you have a, a client, ask you these types of, of, of questions, um, what, what would you tell them? Mm, maybe, you know, if you want to negotiate with the supplier, that's the best way. But, you know, you, if you want to sue, to pursue the legal action, it's not a definitive lower cut of limit. Uh, if you want to decide deci decide to, per to, to pursue the legal action. So it's, it depends on the various factors, such as a potential recovery amount, the importance of dispute, mm -hmm. and uh, the long-term strategic consideration. So it's a lot of factors in this, not just because the, mm -hmm. the money, the, the, the count. Mm -hmm. It's also some, something like that, uh, the face, and uh, how to trust in the future, how to cooperate in the future, and uh, how mm -hmm. to tell the supplier to improve their process and their quality. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. as a general well, smaller dispute, maybe the legal cost and time investment may outweigh the potential recovery, right? Making it less mm -hmm. worthwhile to pursue legal action. However, it is a case by case assessment and some companies may still choose to take legal action for smaller disputes if the underlying issue is significant. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And what I was mentioning was maybe the PO amount is not very high, but mm -hmm. what if these products were delivered maybe to uh, maybe an industrial company and then they use it in their factory and then it creates mm -hmm enormous you know um uh, financial losses right mm -hmm. or maybe even i don't know the building blows up people die or something like that right mm -hmm. some like catastrophic consequences yeah okay um from what i heard before in chinese law um mm -hmm. maybe the buyer can sue for damages also right and um, is that quite common to sue a supplier when there's a quality problem, right? For a lot of extra damages. Mm, consequential damages. Mm, right. Yes. The is consequential this damage... relatively common? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if the damage is the, the, the huge, it's not the small, we should use the legal action. It's the master way to solve the problem. But if you some you, you think it's not necessary, is the is the damage too, too small? Maybe I want to save the cost and time, and don't want to invest a lot of uh, energy or the cost of money to this case. Maybe they could negotiate. Maybe we 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 could find another another corporate in in this business. Maybe we can give the supplier or the buyer some other chance to cooperate. But if you want to back to the damage, damages, it need to some some ways to talk to the supplier, to the boss. Maybe we can, um, get, there's a lot of skills in, in China in lawyer, but uh, I think I don't want to talk a lot in this video. <laughs> So yes. I think that it's what Jessica's saying there, if I may interject, mm -hmm. is that in some cases, the threat of legal action can be mm -hmm. actually much worse than actually the legal action. Um, I think that we all agree that once you go down the legal route, there is no mm -hmm. future in that relationship ever again anyway. Yeah, in China, so, it's pretty clear, I think, yes. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, yeah. well, generally speaking, the rest of the world is... The, the fact what Jessica is saying is that consequential losses, yes, you can sue for. Is that correct, Jessica? Mm -hmm. Yes, right. 
So that answers your question there, uh, Reynold, that yes, you right. can sue for in that case. So mm. at which point, what you would be looking at there would be that the actual legal fees itself would come out of the consequential damages which were paid. Mm. So Intense. that, again, is working with a law firm which understands these things. And don't forget as well, when you go down this, this route, there is many insurance options that you can take out as well. Insurance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Legal insurance, yes. Mm -hmm. as, as you are suing, for example, a supplier, you expect to collect a certain amount of damages. That's what you mean, right? But you haven't yes. collected them yet. You still need to go through the legal proceedings. But what you're saying is that there's ways to actually get some money in advance through an insurance policy? No, 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 no. Basically, what your insurance policy that you could take out for would be based on the insurance company would look at the case, look at the strength and weakness of the case. They may help you with the legal fees for a proportion of it, or what they may do is, as we, Jessica can explain to you, is we can look at freezing assets of the defendant against these legal claims. Mm -hmm. So there, mm -hmm. as Jessica says, there mm -hmm. are many different ways that you can do this. And again, if if you talk to a good experienced lawyer, certainly Jessica, like Jessica is a trial lawyer, they will sit down and say, this could happen to you if you do not cooperate. If you co if co cooperate. Yes. If you become uncooperate, so, this is what could actually, happen. That brings the, me to the supplier yeah. not cooperate, right? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe so again, the if, you, yeah. if we have the ju the, the, the judgment, we can to go to the court to enforce them. You know, this is the right. this is the right. This this mm. is this is our buyer's right. If we have a really damage, the quality is really bad and uh, give people some 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 very bad consequence well of course we can go to the court and get the judge and go to the the court to enforce them mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so it's, it's a legal right yeah oh absolutely um so that brings me to the next question do you have any experiences or examples of, of cases where you were involved uh, with a foreign buyer who got you know, poor quality, even maybe fake products or products with fake components or anything like that, basically bad products from a Chinese supplier, maybe a Chinese manufacturer. Um, and you know, anything, anything you can share that, that, that would be interesting. Because people are wondering, okay, it like, doesn't break, does break, it actually it doesn't work? confidentiality as well, Jessica. Yeah, yes. Yes, we have we have two cases and we cooperate with Clive and uh that that company is a is a foreigner and buy the laptop in China in Shenzhen. Yes, so there's a lot of bad quality and the battery is wrong in, in the in the the other country. So that's mm -hmm. this is but you know it's a legal action in China. We already have the three of uh, try uh, every every case we have a twice uh, have two times in the court. Uh, the mm -hmm. court the judge really focus on how to the the, the quality uh, what's the what's the problem and uh, how we could improve the evidence to to improve the the, the, the quality is so bad. So we mm -hmm. have a lot of evidence to improve us because we have the Clive's statement, uh, Clive as a competence uh, profession, right, prof prof professor, and we have the, the supplier's AD report and uh, to state how what the problem is. And uh, we have the very professional uh, organization uh, give us the test report testing report and those the evidence mm. to the buyer is is good mm. to buyer and yes mm. so if the but the, the the final judgment is not uh to 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 make so we should uh, wait 
the 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 consequence from the court, but maybe it's a, uh, but but you know the the legal action is a long journey, it's really should take a long time, maybe six months, or twelve months, such as so mm. maybe these two cases we should wait sometimes maybe more than three three months, yes, but you mm. know in this case we 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 have lots of meeting to discuss what the problem is and the Clive give a lot of professional suggestions. Yes, thanks Clive. <laughs> no worries, Jessica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, mm -hmm. so that that there's already a few things here that are interesting, right? The first mm -hmm. one is that the court actually took the case. Like mm -hmm. you went did did you say there's two suppliers involved. Did you try to sue more than two suppliers and it was not accepted or did you sue two suppliers and then these two cases yeah are... two for two yeah two yeah. for two okay two for two, mm -hmm. for two for two yeah that's the first thing okay the second thing is from what i understand it's not like you come with your evidence you have one chance and then the judge will go one way or the other it looks like it's mm -hmm. a more elaborate process basically where the judge would say well you get this point, but maybe here it's not so clear. You need to keep working on on your um, your arguments and your evidence. Is is that is that correct? Because that seems like a pretty fair yeah. process based on what you just said. Yes, that's exactly what happens. Um, the, the the first part of it is the first initial hearing, uh, to which um, basically the court has to accept the case first, which is done by submission. Then you get a court date, then you go to court, they have what you would call a preliminary hearing. And after that, you call back, and again is when we start looking at the evidence. And what Jessica's saying here is the value of your evidence is considered by the court. And the completeness of your evidence by the mm -hmm. court. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. That's why okay. that's why it is. It's vital. Remember, we keep saying, make sure you do the due diligence, make sure you have proper contracts, make sure that you understand what you are doing, make sure the supplier understands what you want, and do not leave anything to chance. Because if yeah. you get to a point where Jessica has to become involved, that is when all of this is going to come into play. Mm. Right. So if I understand correctly, if the due diligence and um, writing very clear product specifications and getting a good contract, calling for enforcement in China, et cetera, et cetera, if all of this was done nicely in advance, then it makes things much easier once you are suing the supplier. That is that correct? Yes. 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 Yeah. The contract right. and items is really important. Right. Okay. So you actually, know, that brings you, me to if you, oh, yeah, please. Okay. Please. If you know your contract and items to to prove you are already to sure how what's the standard, what's the mode, what's the value, and what's the money, how to improve your your state. So the mm. judge wants you a, a paper. How to how to write how to ensure and anything we should ensure this already written in the paper in the documents. So as much as possible, things like standards. Um, well, yeah, again, what is required, and then what what happens if things go wrong, right? Yes. Yes. Mm, makes sense. Um, so which bring, yeah, my... which yeah sorry sorry which brings us to the point which was your part of your question mm -hmm. yeah part of the evidentiary process is how you come to your conclusion to place the business with this supplier mm -hmm. which is your due diligence now let's assume Jessica mm -hmm. that they showed you a nice ISO nine thousand and one certificate. Yeah. And you didn't do part of the due diligence that you didn't actually check that number as mm -hmm. I showed you before how we check these things. Yeah. So you took it on face value. Mm -hmm. 
Then it turns out that that certificate is actually either not true or they haven't implemented that system. Mm -hmm. So as, as you know, let's assume that you have got a certificate to say that you are maintaining a quality management system to a certain standard, be it ISO 9001 or medical standard um 13485 or TS 16949. These are standards which you have said you are maintaining. So, Jessica, mm -hmm. what happens if the if that certificate is fake? Yeah. In a, I assume that's just fraud. Like, just you said, uh, in, in our case in China, we are corporate this case. Uh, if it, we have evidence to improve the certification is fake. We also have some other law, uh, legal uh, legal actions. You know, we just use the civil, the civil law, and to solve the problem. If the if it's fake, maybe we can have another ways to solve administration. Um, of also even though it's a crime. You know, yeah. so wow. it's it's big. It's based on how to how to bad to the person to the company and mm -hmm. what's the uh, what's the quality issue and what's the the certification is really fake is 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 to we just need to lot of evidence to improve it so the evidence is the most important in, in anywhere in the legal system yeah so the, so the 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 three things that jessica's talking about that if i may mm -hmm. The first one is you have you can go and, and call it a civil case. The next thing is that you can go to the administration bureau, yes, um, and report it to them, and then they would take up the case. Mm -hmm. Or wow. it could be reported to the police as well as a criminal fraud. Yeah. Wow. It, I mean, um, is this theoretical or no, no, no? It's practical. That really, really it's happens. practical. It's just practical, practical okay. in, 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 yeah. in our two cases in China now. Yes. Wow. Okay. Because a lot of a um, lot of buyers have been, you know, burned uh, by uh, by some suppliers, and there's so many cases where the supplier has uh, maybe maybe it was some fake certificates, often about the products, right? Um, mm -hmm. But sometimes also ISO nine thousand one. Uh, but most often, it it would not be implemented. It's just paperwork for decoration, right? And it's not implemented. Uh, so, um, in these cases, you're telling me that it's actually possible to bother the supplier to go and and see maybe the administration and yes. say, "Well, this is this is a fake. You need to um, you need to help us here." Um, and, and and the supplier would get in trouble or even to the police. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. And I guess, yeah. <laughs> I guess th that would work if it's a lawyer goes there, right? Because otherwise you don't really know how to present that. You get to match that to certain um I would say certain clauses in uh, the civil law uh, uh how to say code uh, you know. Uh, yeah, naturally. You call it? <laughs> the, the exact yeah, naturally. Acts, right? Yeah. Yeah. The, the the natural act is this, and if, if I may, Jessica, if the mm -hmm. buyer has been presented with a certificate, and that certificate says that that company, for example, operates a quality management system in accordance with international standards, mm -hmm. and they have presented a document in format which is presentable to the court, in other words, that they have put it on a website, for example. Mm -hmm. They put a picture of their ISO certificate, for example, on the website. And yeah. then that's not true. Mm -hmm. That is fraud. Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe it's a have a bad result to the foreigner or to the other uh, any any buyers. Maybe they should to take uh, the responsibility to to fake to cheat. Yes, but you, you should you should know what is exactly the fake, and 
we should well, that's prove that, that's evidence, simple, Jessica. you know. Yeah. Jessica, that's simple. A real certificate, you can go online and check it in, in the national database, yeah. the anti-national database. It's got yeah, in it's a really fake. It's, it's simple. Yeah. They, they have a number. You type that mm -hmm. number in. If it comes up with nothing, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a fake. That's mm -hmm. it. Simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's possible to actually, uh, let's say, um, go after a supplier uh, and 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 have some extra leverage if they're not cooperating. That's one more way to go at them, right? Basically. But again, this is something that you would pull the trigger on only when you think, okay, that's it. That's the end of the business relationship with the supplier, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I think and... that, yeah, I think you know, there is different things that you've got to look at here. Um, mm -hmm. Once you escalate this up to Jessica's level, you know that is the it's... end of it. Mm -hmm. That's the end. <laughs> yeah. There is no more. There's yeah. no more talking. Okay, we've we've done talking. You're now in front of a judge, and mm -hmm. all of this thing, all of these fake certificates, all of this. You said, she said. That's right. That's not right. That's going to come out in the open. Mm. Right. Right. Yeah. It's litigation. That's this is litigation totally now, and that's fun. it. It's already done. Yeah, right. So, as Jessica was saying earlier, the threat at that point is best delivered by. Well, let's let's be sort of like about this. Probably me and Jessica walking into your room and saying to you, "We need to have a chat." But you know, yeah. if any anybody in China have the rights to protect their rights, we have oh, a yeah, single. Yeah, we have the civil rights, we have the administration's rights, we have criminal rights, criminal. So I think we we don't talk about how to uh, to break the relationship, the business between the buyer and the supplier. We should do some to prove to how to improve the suppliers, the process and their standards. To mm, give yes, a, a more chance, uh, yes, give more chance yeah, to, to yeah, the buyer but, and the supplier. I agree with you, Jessica, but it comes to the mm -hmm. point in the commercial mm -hmm. relationships when you are no longer the teacher. Mm -hmm. Well, it's there's there's, there's um, preventive work, let's mm -hmm. say remedial work when you can still you still hope that you can make it work, yeah. And then there's recovery and there's reality. Losses. And yeah, at which well, point then there is reality, and uh, that reality then starts to look at. First and foremost, have you got your documents all correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which back to now looks at, back to the evidence. Yeah. Each, each way we keep going back and back. And every time we speak, uh, we know we keep going back to pre preparation and due diligence. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Well, that, yeah. that's a great way to <laughs> to conclude the podcast, I think, because we're getting uh, out, of, uh, out of time here. Uh, yeah. But uh, basically my sort of conclusion, if you agree uh, from what I heard, is that um, obviously there needs to be a lot of work, again, as we mentioned, in, in prevention of issues, right? Picking the right people to work with, um, getting the right types of contracts, um, helping them, giving them feedback, clarifying the quality standards, specifying things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when there are issues, seeing, okay, are we still in the let's make it work phase mm -hmm. or are we past that? And then in that case, uh, and that's really what we wanted to, to cover in this episode is, is there actually still leverage for the buyer to push mm -hmm. the supplier into litigation and mm -hmm. to, uh, to put them in a very uncomfortable situation? Again, if the evidence is on their side, right? Mm -hmm. And to, in the end, collect uh, uh, collect for uh, what you call consequential losses, right, or or damages. And basically, the answer I get today is that yes, um, buyers should not overlook that uh, possibility, and also Chinese suppliers should not maybe not be so brash, you know, about oh. Whatever is China here, nobody will sue us, right? Things uh -huh. maybe have been changing. 
And a lot of Chinese suppliers have not really caught on to that reality, right? So uh, that that's also um, my thinking here. Uh, yeah, anyway, it's true. Though. It is true. It is true. I'll, in, in closing, I'll just say, in China, right. they yeah. operate the system of caveat impora. The buyer the caveat. beware. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, we use caveat ventura. The seller is also be aware. This meeting is what we're talking about. China's legal system is there and it will protect you. Hmm. You may, as a buyer from overseas with a Chinese supplier, you may alleviate yourself through litigation with the Chinese courts. It takes longer than expected, but it is still there. Hmm. It's still an option. It's on the table. It's definitely an option, yes. Okay. Well, that's uh, that's basically what um, uh, what what I was wondering before this podcast episode. <laughs> so, uh, thanks thanks a lot again. Uh, uh, my guests were uh, Jessica Su, um, a senior trial litigator at Yang Ma Law Firm in Shenzhen. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, Jessica, for coming on and and sharing your your advice and and, and experiences. And um, yeah, thank you. Also, and you yeah. know, you know, in in China, there's a compare. If if you compare the China with other countries, the uh, such as cell phone, the the top like I think the China's product is the price is more lower than other countries, but the quality is is. Now is good uh, good enough than before, so maybe in the in the in, in the future maybe they can prove their process and their the standards maybe to confirm they be sure the ISO nine zero zero one is really true and not fake certification. So maybe it's a good business environment maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's already a lot of yeah, good ones. Let's, let's be clear. It's just yeah. inconsistent. So let's let's hope it's mm -hmm. going to be more consistent. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks a lot, and and thanks also to uh, to Clive again, who's been here for uh, a few times. And again, congratulations mm -hmm. on the uh, the award. Uh, as I, uh, I just repeat, uh, tech, best technical legal consultant, twenty twenty four. So um, mm -hmm. nice, uh, nice yeah. one here. All right. Yes. And, uh, All right. Goodbye, everybody. Uh, yeah.